everybody, my friends of Cosmic Agency. My name is Gosha, and today I have a bunch of different mini topics for you. I actually had to divide it because I have so many of these mini topics accumulating, so um, I will do the next part some other day. Today, we're gonna start with something I'm gonna ask you to do. Something I'm gonna ask you to do. It's actually Yaski's idea. And then I'm going to very shortly say something about the photos of the Earth taken from space. As I see, people are asking uh, on the comments under the flat Earth video. And then some people have asked me how, how is it that they got their internet back. So that's going to be very short. And then a bunch of mini topics such as a short comment about the monoatomic gold very short and then a question someone asked me comparing Yaski's teachings to Vedanta short comment about that as well then interesting question from someone was answered and the question was about nuclear weapons as supposedly a big no-no for the federation so how is that that the bombs were detonated and allowed to be detonated over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan so that's going to be answered by Yaski and then the next mini topic, something of your interest, I'm sure. This is about pineal gland. What does it do actually? Is it really of that importance as, as people say? Now the next topic will be sh briefly about the Mexican earthquakes. And then something about vestigial organs in the human body. Uh, do they really have any 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 purpose but very short remember these are just brief excerpts of different conversations that we have with them casually here and there so they are not like entire topic and of, and of course not everything that can be said on these topics uh, but I just had to share it and then someone was asking about the Tigetan and Federation um, relation and all that so it's going to be briefly very shortly and why they are here now and what it what is it they are going to do answered briefly by Aneka as well so let's go to the beginning now something I want to ask you as you know we have made this video from Yaski uh, called I do not consent the message to the controllers the repercussions the consequences of that video and of that message we cannot know and measure of course uh, but it is something that Yaski felt she needed to do. So now she's asking, and it's something that I had in my mind as well, as 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 as, as well as some of you had in mind, I, I know, I saw in some messages. Yaski is asking for you to make your own I do not consent videos. As some of you may know or may not know if you are new, I have a different channel called a call from the planet Earth, but it's in Spanish, Yamada desde Planeta Tierra. And there we have had different campaigns and different sorts of um, communications sent from the individual people, amateur videos um, or whatever videos sent to the Federation, to the benevolent races, anything you want to express. And now the campaign would be for you to express yourself to the cabal and say that you do not consent because they are analyzing and they are looking at what the general population is saying and how they are reacting they must so under that channel we are going to publish all these videos uh, some of some rules that Aneka mentioned uh, a proper proper language do not use a language in those videos for which the videos could be censored so make it sound so it's understood but without those uh, sensitive words also somewhere in the video in the title you must mention I do not consent and express what it is that you do not consent to and another thing Aneka mentioned that is very important um, I don't know if it was Yazi's idea or, or Aneka's herself here is it's very important to say that you are speaking for the millions of other people who are silent and they cannot express themselves. So you are speaking for them you, as their representative, sort of, because they are 
thousands of people who are against what is happening in the world, but they don't have access to YouTube or they don't have access to making videos or to expressing themselves and they do not know what to do. So if you are called to do this, uh, then you are speaking the name of those who are not able to do this. So mention these um, two things. I do not consent and that you are speaking for the thousands of others who cannot express themselves and do not use any words that could be censored. And when you make this video, it can be done uh, by your phone, any type of uh, way, uh, or you can upload it to YouTube. Send it then to the email. Sirona is the one helping me with that channel. Send it to the email, which will be provided underneath this video in the comments in the description box. Thank you very much. Anything can help. Anything can do something and anything can have a ripple effect. We, we never know how, no matter how small the action can influence things in a larger picture. So thank you very much in advance and let's do this. I'm going to put Yaski's video, I do not consent, as the first one in that channel. And I'll link to that channel also in the description box. Now, after the flat earth video, which caused a lot of controversies, and I know that the public is very divided uh, about this, uh, some of you has asked me, well, what about the real photos of earth from space? Send us real photos from space and we will have proof. Well, this, I have to address this because it's very respectfully saying, um, it's very funny for me to say that people truly believe that if I send a photo like that, if they did it, and then we shared it with you, that that would serve as a proof of any kind. Okay, let's imagine that it did send us a photo. Now, that photo, in theory, okay, that's not the photo, but let's say it is, this photo has been sent to us by them. It is a real photo of Earth. Now we have proof. That photo is a proof. Will that really serve as a proof, especially now in the age of the digital photography and videos? This can be modified. This can be a not real photo. This can be edited. That photo is no proof that the Earth is round because then you will be asking for me to provide you a proof that that photo is real. So you will want a proof to evidence the proof. Proof of a proof. In the age of Billy Mayer, where there was no Photoshop and there was no photography modification, Billy Mayer received photos. He actually was allowed to photograph a ship. And those photos were discredited even in the times where no digital modifications even were in existence for the wider public. So how is it that now the photo, some, some random photo that I share with you, will serve you as a proof? It will not be a proof of any kind. It was already used. It was already tried in the times of Billy Mayer because remember this team we are talking to is the same race and, and even some of the same members of that team that contacted Billy Mayer. And those photos served nothing. They were discredited and the story was forgotten almost. So nowadays, the photos will not serve as any type of a proof. So that's that. And also don't forget that there are still Federation directives and none of the races out there is allowed to be sharing photography. Um, from outside. So even though they are rebels and they go against, a lot of times, against the Federation directives, they still have to abide by, by those rules. Uh, they still have government. The government extends beyond space and that government is the Federation. Now talking about the internet, some people have asked how is it that they got their internet back? Well, they did. I don't know exactly how, but it's internal politics between Alanim and um, and the Federation. So so they got it back. Uh, I don't know the details, but it's their internal politics, internal stuff. Uh, now, short comment, very short, about the monoatomic gold, if someone is interested, because it was mentioned that the monoatomic gold uh, is used in metpods. So Robert here is talking to Yaski and He's asking, 
where they get that monoatomic gold in the pots from if they get it from the ether replicated or that kind of monoatomic gold does not work and she says yes it works it is replicated it is printed directly with the necessary atomic structure because only organic stuff cannot be replicated but minerals yes they can be replicated and robert is asking okay so in that case you do not need to do special mining uh, all of that can be replicated she says yes almost everything can be replicated but she stresses i must insist that everything natural and original is still preferred preferred and robert is asking why is the natural preferred doesn't have any other properties and she says well more than anything it's just ideas no not that it has any special properties i do not see that as, as something that matters and she says here but it's like me who prefers genuine poly mattel dolls not replicated ones so it's just a fun fact these these types of videos are just full of fun facts and a little short bits of pieces bits and pieces of information here and there now here i received an email from someone who has been uh, listening to our videos and he's comparing what Yasuhi is teaching about to Vedanta, philosophy on of oneness. So he's wondering whether Tigetans actually involved themselves in the development of the Vedas, of the Vedas, because that philosophy of oneness is very similar to what Yasuhi is talking about. And this is how Yasuhi responded. I really like this response, so I, I wanted to share this with you. Yes, he says, that is star knowledge. We didn't make it up. It doesn't have to be us seeding the information and any, any other with access to the same ancient truths can. What we say does not belong to us. It belongs to us all. And yes, star beings have been helping humanity throughout the ages and also battling other forces that want to confuse and suppress. Easy to see who is wanting to help and who is wanting to exploit, who is positive and who is negative, as from the point of view of humans and their needs. Those who share freely and promote study of everything people can get their hands on, but ask to use all that knowledge with discernment, mind and wisdom are positive. And those who hide, censor, and suppress what others want to say are negative and regressive. I especially like the beginning of this, of this response when she's saying, this is star knowledge. We didn't seed it necessarily ourselves. This belongs to all races. So uh, that was that. Next topic is about nuclear weapons. And I'm going to read the question, the exact question that someone sent. Nuclear weapons are a big no-no to the Federation, because that's what it was said. Well then, how come the two nuclear bombs were allowed to be detonated over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan? And Yasuki here is responding the following. I do not have the answer. Here it is said that it was unexpected so those two detonations brought on an alarm onto the Federation representatives near Earth, making them start a council to intervene some way or another, starting the famous three waves of volunteers as described well by Dolores Cannon. It gets worse. It's not only those two detonations that kind of do not fit into the Federation banning nuclear weapons narrative. We must add countless, many, I don't even have the right number, of nuclear detonations called tests, being them on the surface or underground tests, explosions all over and caused by many countries, US, Russia, France, the list is long. Those 
also alter the cloth between densities, dimensions. It kills everything and prevents it from growing again. So it's not two nuclear detonations. We are talking about many, dozens of detonations. But on the other hand, if you are versed in the UFO lore, you know that UFOs have a long history of interacting with nuclear sites, warehouses and missiles. They have a history of deactivating nuclear weapons all over the world. And it is said that the reason why nuclear detonation tests stopped is because the Federation pressed the human representatives to stop them. So yes, there is evidence here and there on Earth that the Federation does intervene to stop nuclear weapons. But there is no evidence about Federation intervening directly on other topics and problems. Then we may have a problem defining what is intervention, because in that case, even me writing this is intervention to stop the problems of the Earth at hand today. So it's not easy to define intervention. But with nuclear weapons, it is pretty much what I have described above. That's the answer on this topic. I have nothing else to add from myself. Most of the time, I'm just going to read these answers because they are perfect as they are. I have nothing else to add. Uh, Robert, usually from my um, from the Spanish world, he does add uh, quite a lot, and sometimes I feel like I should maybe add more, but I just do not have more at this moment on this topic, and I feel like the answers themselves are enough uh, most of the time. Uh, well, here I have a topic about pineal gland. This is very interesting to all of you, I am pretty sure. A uh, pineal gland is supposed to be this really special organ within our body, a third eye that helps us connect with the source, with the other realms of our existence and see things that are not easily available to our physical sight. So how does it work? Does the pineal gland really have this special function? Now this is translated from Spanish, okay? So there might be some mistakes. Aneka here is responding. The pineal gland is a signal modulator, using a term example from tech gadgets. But it works in conjunction with the rest of the brain. The etheric signal from the soul, contrary to what everyone on earth, new agers, will tell you, does not enter through the pineal gland but through the entire brain and through all the living cells of the body as a whole. But the pineal one, pineal gland, could say that it is an interface between this signal and the conscious brain. It is like a translator of the translator to modify the signal for the conscious person projecting the etheric experience like an astral travel towards translating that into the material world as the memory of what happened. In other words, it causes something from another plane of existence to be remembered, but not experienced, remembered, because we experience those things always anyway, just don't remember. So the pineal gland helps us remember. So in other words, it causes something from another plane of existence to be remembered, not experienced by the individual, like dreams, for example, or astral visions, remote viewing, and visions of other planes. So the signal of what is not from the material world passes or enters the body through every living cell especially the nervous cells, the central nervous system and the brain, and then the pineal gland helps the conscious part of the person to remember those experiences that he or she anyway always has. 
That is why people believe that the pineal is the eye that allows us to see what is not evident, other planes. But it is not that it sees it, but it translates it into something understandable by the subject. The pineal gland has inside, among its cellular structures, rods, as in the eye. I hope I'm translating well here, rods. These rods are not that they see or react with the impression of a light stimulus, but rather they use the same structure of translation towards a system of nerves that come out of the gland to the cortical brain, among other places. So the rods only use the same structure and electrochemical principle of the rods of the retin retina, retina, retina of the eye to put an impression or nervous stimulus similar to that of the eye so that the subject experiences something that he will interpret as seeing something with an image that does not come from the eyes. The nerve structures of the pineal gland are largely connected to the psychovisual area of the brain that is located at the back of the brain, just as the optic nerves do. The pineal translates the signals into stimuli that the psychovisual area of the brain can interpret as images. But it doesn't get the signal from the spiritual side. This is done by the brain and body itself. Or it doesn't do it alone, but the whole brain, body, and pineal all together are doing that job. Now here Robert is asking, would the size of the pineal be related to the subject's degree of consciousness? Annika says it may be related as cause and effect, but usually it is not necessarily related. The awakening of a subject does not depend on his brain structure, but of his intention, soul, and reasoning. Now, the fun fact, the Tigetan brain has a pineal gland that is about 400% larger than that of the human, average human, which also makes or increases the connection with their source, increases telepathy, and the ability to make astral travel and use other senses or faculties called extrasensory. So I think this explanation is super interesting. Uh, it's not that the eye, the pineal gland eye sees itself, but it translates the signals and those signals and those experiences are received through the whole body, through the brain and through all the cells and the pineal all together as a package. Now, very shortly here, Robert has asked Annika about the um, Mexican earthquake that just happened a few weeks ago, and there were some strange lights associated with that. And he's asking, what are those lights that they claim to have seen in the Mexico earthquake? Is that normal? And Annika says, no, that's harp. They say it's tectonic. No, it's not tectonic. It is electromagnetism that electrically charges the atmosphere through that device. And here she's saying that uh, there are always some kind of earthquakes in Mexico around September, that this has been noticed by them already, as if some sort of ritual is being performed. And twice on the 7th and twice on the 19th September. So that is not a coincidence. So Robert is saying, yeah, because a normal earthquake wouldn't produce those type of lights, right? And she says, well, the humans say that yes, but we do not see a strong correlation, only minimal, not like, not like lights that size that were seen. That is artificial. Yes, small lights have been reported before, even in ancient times, but not that size. That's new. 
And Robert is asking, what, about, what is the objective of causing these earthquakes and in that month? Aneka says it is not known, but something shady there again. There are rituals and Illuminati numero numerology, numerology, making the population suffer. They do that all the time with various human populations all the time, or with all of them, better said. And something similar happened in Canarias when a vol volcano exploded. And uh, she says, note that it began to erupt on September 19th, same day as the 1985 and 2019 Mexico earthquake, both on September 19th. That is not normal. And yes, there was harp activity in the zone. And we see that this is artificial. In other words, the volcano was made to erupt artificially. And Robert again is asking why? Well, the same, she says, the same as with earthquakes. It's creating chaos, distractions, so that they do not focus against the papaya thing, all that and all that. And also, as usual, sacrifices to their entities, all that together. Um, so that's that on those events. Now, we have a short conversation with Aneka here about the vestigial organs of the human body. Um, like I said, each of these topics is not meant to be presented to you as some sort of expose on a, on a subject. These are just casual chats with ha we have with, with them as friends and just different topics come up. I just, I just happen to want to share it, but do not you know, take it as the entirety of what could be said on the subject. This is just little bits and pieces that, you know, like I said, that I like to share with you. So the vestigial organs of the human body, here Robert has started this conversation and he's saying, um, what do you know about those organs, Aneka? They say that they do not work due to the evolution of the human being, but that is Darwinism. And of course, as we know, actually, there are, there is a purpose to all of them. It's just that we don't know exactly. So Aneka says, yes, they all have a purpose. There are no vestigial organs. Example, the appendix. It is actually a node like the tonsils to contain infections. It is a tonsil for the gut. It is a sensory organ and secretes amygdala that detects and controls infections in the gastric system. You can see it as a sensor. It triggers glandular reactions and modulates them to deal with gastric problems. But here I'm saying, well, why does it hurt so much? Like some people have the appendix attacks, hurt so much, and then they are removed. Well, she says it hurts because it gets infected like the tonsils too. And it is due to a poor diet based on carbohydrates and sugars that cannot handle the gastric system, lack of fibers and nutrients. I think it's reverse. Based on carbohydrates and sugars that the gastric system cannot handle, lack of fibers and nutrients. And Robert is asking, what are the consequences of extracting the appendix? She says, ongoing stomach and gastric problems. Still, the system tries to compensate. And here Robert is asking, and what about the coccyx? Coccyx. Coccyx. Uh, she says, it's a terminal of the spine. But he's asking, but is it good for something else just for that to be the terminal? Why does there have to be a terminal? <laughs> and she says, well, because without a terminal, uh, the, the spine would not end. Only in this way does the spine end. In addition to the coccyx, there are large, uh, in addition, in the coccyx, there are large nodes of nerve endings of the hip. Well, here I was asking, what about sinuses? And here she says, olfactory sensor pass to the brain, connection with the taste system. Uh, 
so it was it was just that i know that each of these questions raises probably many 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 more questions and these are just some aperitifs uh, of what this topic could be what these topics could be well here i have the last thing to share with you and this is about the the, the government the federation taigeta and all that it is based on someone's question and the question is following if they, Taigetans, are supposed to not to have government, to have the federation, isn't that to delegate your power as we do it here when giving our votes to politicians? And Aneka is responding, that is true. And the people of Taigeta no longer like this and they no longer agree. Therefore, Alenim has moved Taigeta away from the Federation as much as possible. For the people who are new, Alenim is, is the leader of the Taigetan society, is, is the queen of the Taigetan society because they are matriarchal and they do have a royalty system, but it's nothing to do like the royalty system on Earth. And Alenim is also on board in the ship uh, in the orbit of Earth. So they don't no longer agree the Taigetans and therefore Alenim has moved Taigeta away from the Federation as much as possible, being that Taigeta is only a member of the Federation through the Council of Alcione and not directly. And yes, they don't like it, the Taigetan people, because the Federation does restrict and controls what free peoples want even though in theory they don't. Even with their policies of only cooperation and not of intervention in internal affairs of the planets that compose them. So officially, the Federation does not get involved in the affairs of the peoples or the cultures that compose it, but in practice, they do limit or interfere. So the social spiritual level of the Taigeta people is already such that they are in a position of not needing the Federation and they do not accept that rules are imposed on them. Although officially no rule is imposed. Robert is asking, so what does Taigeta have to do? Get out of Alcyona Council? to remove themselves totally from the Federation. And she says, well, that is not convenient because there, on that level, there is a more consistent cooperation. What Taigeta does now through Alenim is to separate from the Federation directly. That is, Taigeta does whatever on its own. And if the Federation wants to limit that, it has to go through the Council of Alcyon first. Even so, and this also relates to the topic of photos, even so, Taigeta must follow rules of coexistence in space, like the annoying first directive, prime directive. Also, Taigeta decides what to pay attention to and what not to pay attention to. So there is more freedom, at least mostly, but, but they cannot ignore totally the Federation rules and the prime directives. Now, Robert is asking, now that you are here again, what are you going to do now? Aneka's answer, within the limits of our possibilities, serve as guides so that the people themselves can free themselves from the hands of the cabal, whoever they are. We cannot do it directly, only as guides. People should do the work, not us. We cannot, and it doesn't correspond to us. We can make people aware of other options, but we cannot do the work for humans, or only to a limited extent by sending voluntary star seeds there. So yes, we can interfere, but in that way. And most races, that's how they interfere, sending starseeds. That's the intervention. We are the intervention. 
That said, we do help more than meets the eye, but we cannot and should not take credit for such things. But we know it. We know the influence we have, and that is why we continue, because it is what moves us, because it is what makes us feel that we make a difference. Robert here is commenting, and in addition, if you did do something more overtly uh, and said what you're doing, it could be seen as invasive. Maybe not by us, a small minority group of starseeds that are just like wanting to cooperate with them officially, but by majority of the population are on Earth. So as invasive. And she says, that is one of the reasons why we do not say more about what we do. And here Robert says, and many people do say already that ETs are here to invade or whatever. And Aneka responds, that's just, that's, it's, that's only their own mentality being reflected. There is nothing there on earth that we need to invade for. Another reason why we care and we are here is because many people on earth are members of our race or are friends of our race. Thank you very much, Aneka. That's lovely. Thank you very much, Yaski, as well, for your answers. I'm going to wind this video down. Thank you very much for listening. These were my mini topics for today. I have, I have many more, but I had to divide them into the next mini topic videos. Like, for example, trees, big trees and Tartaria. People were asking me about that. Busegi Mountain, something about their ships. Um, uh, Matthias's question about the memories from the past, how it might help with the discovering the current mission. And then I also have uh, an incident that happened on board. Uh, actually, an Urma, Urma a member of the crew, a doctor himself, was injured and he was brought onto the Tigetan ship and Aneka and Sanetra were operating on him. So I'll share with you some details of what Anneka uh, said about that experience and that, um, that operation she had to perform. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we continue on. A lot of new stuff coming your way. As usual, this is never ending. And uh, be strong, stay positive no matter what. And uh, keep finding details in your life that are helping you to maintain positive and strong and elevated and until the next video thank you very much all of you for your support bye bye